Hello, on this video I'm going to show you how to insert a record on a Microsoft SQL database. But before we write any code, let's take a look on the database. So the connection, when I connect, in my case it's an IP address, your or maybe something else. But all I want here is to make sure that I can connect with this server name and also with the credentials that I created on the past video. So if I click on connect, if I connect to the database, that means the server name is good. Now let's go to Visual Studio. So this is the project that I got from the past video. And the first thing I want to do is go to the app settings.json file. And here I have the connection string. For the connection string to work, I need four things. The server, and that's the IP address of my server, the database, RiversDB, then the user ID, the password is correctly, and that's it for the connection string. Now, it's very important for you to understand that this is not the safest, not the best connection string there is, but I'm using the simplest one possible just for learning purpose, just for simplicity. Let's go to the controller now. And if you remember, here is where we get the connection string. Now we can, right here, write the code to insert a record on the database, but then this code would not be reusable by other classes. So I'm going to create a folder here. I'm going to name it DAL, and that stands for Data Access Layer. And inside the DAL, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a class. And I'm going to name this class DAL person. The DAL person stands for data access layer person because it's going to access the person table from our database. Now, there is nothing here on the DAL person class for now, but let's go to the home controller and I want Visual Studio to auto generate some code for me. So I do not want to use this. I want to call the DAL person. So for that, include the DAL folder here. And now I can instantiate an object type DAL. So, and the reason that right here in the home controller that we can read a value from the JSON file is because we have the configuration and the DAL person does not have the configuration. So I want to pass the configuration as a parameter to the DAL person constructor. Let's go back to the DAL person for a second. So there is no code here whatsoever yet. And I'm passing a value as a parameter for the constructor. And sure enough, the constructor is complaining that there is nothing like that. So I'm going to hover over and I'm going to click on show potential fixes. And one of the fixes to generate the con constructor. So I'm going to click here. Let's go over the DAL person to see what happened. So all this code here was generated for me automatically by Visual Studio, which is a good thing. Now back to the home controller, I want to create a method that receives a person object as a parameter now. So dp dot, I want to call it add user, and I'm going to pass the person object as a parameter. And I want the person object to return the ID of the record that it just inserted. Back to the database, if you insert a value into the database, into the table, the name is going to be Anna, and the city is going to be Austin. If I run this code, and if I select everything, there is an ID right here. And this ID was auto-generated because of the way that I set up this table. So I want a way to get this ID back. Back to Visual Studio, I'm going to put int. UID equals add user. Now remember, the add user method does not exist yet, so that's why Visual Studio is having a red squiggly. If I hover over, show potential fixes, 
Visual Studio can generate a method for me. So I'm going to click here. And then if I go to the DAO person, the method is right here. So right now it's internal. I want it to be public. And I'm going to delete this because it's not implemented yet. I'm going to put a return zero just so Visual Studio is going to stop complaining. So now here I can actually write the codes to insert the person objects data into the database. Every time I write the code for that, I like to divide this in four steps. So let's connect to the database. The first thing is to get the connection string. And we have the configuration so we can get the connection string. And I can go over the app settings and, and get the key of my key value pair. So I can put it right here to get the connection string. The next step is to create a SQL connection. And I'm going to pass the connection string as a parameter. Again, Visual Studio is complaining right here because it doesn't know what SQL connection is. So I'm going to hover over and show potential fixes. And I'm going to click on using system.data.sql client. Now it's happy. And the next step is to open the connection. So con.open. The step number two is to create a command. So the first thing I want to do is to create a query. And the query is going to go right there inside. And I could write the query right here, but I don't like to. I much rather write the query on SQL Server Management Studio. So here in SQL Server Management Studio, I have the query. And I know this query works because every time I run, I got a new value right here. But if you notice, every time you insert a value, there is a new ID right here. I want this ID. And in order for me to get the ID, I just need to add another statement right here. And the statement is, so now if I run the same code, I get a ID back right here. And that's the ID of the value I just inserted. So if I insert a new value, run it again, return is 19. And it comes from this row. So I'm going to copy this entire query. And I'm going to take it back to Visual Studio. And I'm just going to paste it right here. But now there's a problem. If I run this code, it's going to insert exactly this value here all the time. And I don't want that. So I want to make this into a parameter instead of making it into a hard code value. To make as a parameter, I put at and the name of the parameter I want. And the second parameter is at person city. So my query now is ready. And now I need to create a SQL command. And as a parameter here, I want the query as well as the connection. And now I'm ready to add the values from the person object into the query. And here, there'll be two parameters. And the first parameter is where you want to insert. In my case, it's going to be the P name because I want this value to go right here. And the value that I want to go over there is going to be the person dot name. I'm getting the name of the person object and I'm replacing with the P name parameter on the query. And now I need to do the same thing for the city. And that's it for step number two. Now step number three, we need to execute the command. So I'm going to create a reader. And the reason I'm creating a reader is because I want to read back the ID. So I'm sending the person and reading back the ID. And reader.reads retrieves one row of the database. But in my case here, there is only one row. And I want to save 
the ID. So int UID equals reader. And I know it's on position zero because there's only one. And I want to convert to a string. But now I have a little problem because this is a string and this is a um, integer. So I'm going to convert. And I convert whatever returns back into an integer. Now, this here is definitely not the best way for you to convert a string into an integer. But for learning purpose only, for simplicity, I'm using that. And the final step is to close the connection. And that's quite simple. Con dot close. And now, instead of returning 0, I'm going to return the UID. So this code is now complete. And right here in the home controller, now I have the ID back. And I would love to save this ID into the person object. However, if we go to the person object, it doesn't have the user ID here. I would love to create one. So I'm going to create from the controller right here. I'm going to use the person object. I have the user CD and the username, but I want to do a user ID, which is not there. And because it's not there, it doesn't exist. Visual Studio complains. I'm going to hover over, show potential fix, and I want to generate a property. So now if I go to the person model, I have a property right here. I'm going to delete the internal because I want to be a simple get and set. And then finally, I can run this code. Click on Submit. And Joe and Seattle go to the second page. There is only one thing here that I would love to have here on page 2, which is the ID of the person that we just inserted. And to do that, it's quite easy. We can just go to the page 2, and now we can put the model and UID. So let's run again. Click on Submit, and here I have the ID of the record that I just inserted for Jane Doe. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. This is easy, and you can do it.